Let me just take a moment and look at this beautiful sight. A beautiful night, beautiful weather, and a beautiful crowd. Thank you for coming. Honored candidates for graduation and distinguished guests, on behalf of the district governing board, it is my privilege to welcome you to the commencement ceremony of Eastern Arizona College, culminating our 134th year. We shall begin tonight's program with an invocation offered by the very Reverend Devin Scott Gillespie, Vicar of All Saints Episcopal Church in Safford, and Saints Philip and James Episcopal Church in Marinci. God be with you. Let us pray. Gracious and caring God, our source of light, we ask for your almighty hand to be upon these graduates as we send them forward. With their classes and grading now complete, may they strive toward excellence in all they do. With the applause quieted, may they celebrate and lift up those around them. With the speeches concluded, may their voices rise up to pronounce peace and justice in the world. With the fanfare ceasing, may they find bliss in future endeavors and adventures. With degrees and credentials in hand, may their achievements grow and enrich their communities. As their lives commence, may they con conduct their life's work with exceptional skill and integrity inspired to go forth and set the world on fire from this day forward. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated. Tonight, I wish to honor the dignitaries seated on the stage with me tonight. Dr. Brad Montierth, Secretary of the District Governing Board. Mrs. Tina McMaster, Member of the District Governing Board. Mr. Jeff Larson, Chairman of the District Governing Board. Mr. Rick Matais, Member of the District Governing Board. The Honorable Rusty Bowers, former Speaker of the Arizona House of Representatives. Mr. Heston Welker, Vice President of Administration for EAC. Dr. Cindy Olvey, President of the EAC Alumni Association. And Dr. Susan Wood, Vice President of Academic and Student Affairs at EAC. Ladies and gentlemen, we call your attention to the honor stoles, the gold honor stoles worn by many members of tonight's graduating class. The gold honor shields are worn by students with the highest grade point averages during their attendance here at Eastern Arizona College. Also, the longer honor stoles worn by graduates who are members of the EAC chapter of the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. We salute all of our honor graduates for their accomplishments. To your right and my left are members of EAC's faculty and administrative corps. They are the college's most treasured resource. Please join me in acknowledging EAC's professionals with a round of applause. I am pleased also to recognize EAC's fantastic music department for its assistance with this evening. Please join me in acknowledging this talented group with a round of applause. Each graduation day, Eastern Arizona College celebrates student progress and academic achievement. We salute our new candidates for graduation and wish, wish each of you continued success. You give us cause for high expectations and hope for a brighter future. Tonight, we will award degrees and certificates to 607 candidates. You come from 13 counties across the state of Arizona, 14 different states, 
and from the countries of Canada, France, and Mexico. We will now hear from Dr. Cindy Olvey, President of the Eastern Arizona College Alumni Association. Following her remarks, we will be favored with a special musical number entitled When You Believe from the film Prince of Egypt, performed by EAC's music department under the direction of Mr. Jeff Despain. Vice President Susan Wood will then present the EAC Changing Lives Award recognition and introduce our student and faculty speakers. Thank you, President Haney. Chairman Larson, members of the governing board, parents, families, faculty and staff, and distinguished guests, greetings. And to members of the class of 23, on behalf of the EAC Alumni Association, it is my great pleasure to extend a very special, heartfelt congratulations. Graduates, this is your night. It is my honor to welcome you as the newest members of the, wait for it, Eastern Arizona College Alumni Association. <laughs> Being an alum means you have a lifetime connection to EAC. You are joining an elite community of thousands of engaged and accomplished alums from every state in the US and even across our borders. This year, in honor of your accomplishments, the Alumni Association is offering each graduate a gift. This shirt was designed especially for the class of 23. Graduates, about two weeks ago, you should have received an email telling you about the shirt and inviting you to pick yours up at the Alumni Visitor Center in the Students' Activity Center. It features EAC colors, purple and gold, and it says Eastern Arizona Alumni with the logo of the Alumni Association that features Gila Hank. The background simulates the skin of a Gila monster in purple and gold. We hope you will wear it with pride. I heard that today was the deadline for picking up your shirt, but in case you missed the email or haven't picked it up, I heard that we have some left. So be sure to go by the alumni office next week and ask for your shirt. You know, I recall a night similar to this when I sat where you're sitting, listening to speakers and waiting for my name to be called for a diploma. But that was back in the 1900s, before most of you were probably born. <laughs> After I graduated from Eastern, I went on to school for many more years. But I can tell you that my very best years were spent at EAC. I made wonderful friendships and memories. I took great classes from faculty who I still remember to this day, believe it or not. And even though some things may have changed, some things stay the same. Whether in a classroom on South Campus or virtually online, Eastern offers us an incredible opportunity for learning from faculty and from each other. Throughout our lives, the memories and experiences, whether good or challenging, have also given us an opportunity to grow into the people that we are becoming. It's been many years since I graduated, but I never lost my ties to Eastern. The EAC Alumni Association is a great way to maintain your connection. As long as we have your mailing address or your email address, you'll receive our newsletter called the Helogram. You'll read about what's happening at the college, what some of your classmates are doing, who got married, and who passed away. In the future, you may be hearing from us when we sponsor reunions for the class of 23. And that may sound like it's a long ways off, but trust me, it'll be here before you know it. And by the way, we also sponsor specialty reunions if you participated in sports or music or drama for those eras. The Alumni Association also works with the EAC Foundation to award 259 scholarships every year. Some of you may have received one of those scholarships. 
In the future, you may want to considering honor someone who made a difference for you with, with a scholarship. Or you may even want to establish a scholarship in your name. I know all of you will be going in different directions after tonight, but throughout your lifetime, please know, you will find fellow EAC alum holding doors open to you and willing to provide their support and assistance. And in the meantime, members of the class of 23, a big congratulations, you made it. Go forth into this life daringly and audaciously, and no matter where you go, or what challenges you may face, always remember, go monsters.
It is my pleasure to be with you tonight. I wish you could see this site from where I am with the sky kind of darkening behind you. I, I just feel happy. This is wonderful. We are excited to add a new item to the commencement ceremony tonight as we announce the recipient of the Changing Lives Award. This award allows our students to recognize outstanding EAC employees who have made a difference in their lives. Our Employee Recognition Committee created a survey asking students to nominate an EAC employee who made a difference in their lives, positively contributed to EAC, and worked to benefit the community. The committee was thrilled to receive 132 student responses across all three EAC campuses. The committee then used a rubric to select an employee from the Thatcher campus. So if we could have a drum roll. Thank you, thank you. The EAC, thank you, perfect. <laughs> I'm impressed. And actually, I forgot something. Give me a second. I did that on purpose so the suspense would continue to build. The EAC employee receiving the Changing Lives Award for the 2022-2023 academic year is Mr. Aaron Burke. Let me tell you about Aaron. Aaron has been an employee at Eastern Arizona College for nearly 14 years and just completed his first year as Dean of the Science, Math, and Allied Health Divisions. Prior to becoming a Dean, Aaron worked as a biology professor. Aaron has changed the lives of many EAC students. A common theme among the nominations was his cheerful attitude and contagious smile. One nominator said, he was always excited to teach and genuinely cared for his students. Several nominators indicated that they had been struggling in school or in their lives when they took a class from Aaron. They expressed gratitude for the way he provided reassurance, support, and mentoring. One student said, he treated his students like everyone was intelligent. He has helped me even with non-academic things when I struggle to make a life decision. Aaron's nominators also acknowledged how he strives to contribute positively to EAC. Aaron is deeply invested in the progress of EAC students and at the same time known for caring about academic proficiency. One nominator observed, Mr. Burke streamlined the STEM department and has had many solid impacts on the EMS program. These past semesters I've seen various teachers become more cohesive and thoughtful. Another exp student expressed how Aaron is making positive steps to improve EAC's STEM classrooms and buildings. Lastly, Aaron works hard, we're, we're making you stand up here a long time. <laughs> Lastly, Aaron works hard to contribute to his community. His nominators mentioned his contributions to the annual STEAM Festival and his involvement as an EMT and volunteer firefighter for the town of Pima. The most meaningful way Aaron gives back to the community is by molding and inspiring young people. One nominator stated, every person I know who has met Mr. Burke turns into someone who cares more about their education and passing classes. These students will now go into a career and make a difference. For all these reasons and so many more, we are honored to recognize Mr. Aaron Burke as the recipient of the EAC Changing Lives Award for the 2022-2023 school year. And I will add that I just saw in the courier that Aaron was also nominated as the 2023 Safford Rotary Teacher of Distinction. So we are not the only ones who recognize his uh, contributions. It is now my honor to introduce this year's speakers for our commencement ceremony. They are Samantha Madrid, representing the graduating class, and faculty and staff representative Angelica DiPaolo. 
Samantha Madrid is originally from Eager, Arizona, and is a graduate of Round Valley High School. Tonight, she is receiving her associate degree in psychology. Samantha and our faculty speaker, whom I will introduce in a moment, both made history together representing EAC on the women's basketball team. As one of three captains, Samantha helped her team lead, lead her team to the national playoffs and a 29-2 season. Samantha is also a model student athlete. During her time at EAC, Samantha helped other students as a tutor in Spanish, psychology, and sociology. Next Samantha, sorry, next semester, Samantha will once again make history as she plays on EAC's first women's soccer team. At the same time, Samantha's plans on, pursue, is plans on pursuing a bachelor's degree in marriage and family therapy from BYU Pathway. Samantha is bilingual. She's an artist, an athlete who loves music, singing, and public speaking. She also loves adventure and outdoors and traveling. Samantha is humbled to represent the graduating class of 2023 tonight, and we look forward to hearing from her. Angelica DePaulo is Eastern Arizona College's head women's basketball coach. Coach DePaulo is originally from Sao Paulo, Brazil, where she played professional basketball. She came to EAC in August of 2020 as the assistant women's basketball coach and served in that position for two years. In 2022, she was named the Women's Basketball Coaches Association two-year college assistant coach of the year. At the beginning of this semester, Coach DePaulo was made the head women's basketball coach, and what a year it was. During her first year as head coach, she led the Eastern Arizona College women's basketball team all the way to nationals. Her team was 29-2. What a remarkable feat. For her efforts, she was recently named the ACCAC Region 1 Coach of the Year. Coach DePaulo's philosophy is to challenge and support her team by encouraging them to be accountable, authentic, and compassionate leaders. She strives to foster a space that embraces each student's uniqueness. Coach DePaulo received her associate degree from New Mexico Junior College, her bachelor's degree in human services from Utah State University, and a master of business administration degree from Upper Iowa University. We will now hear from our speakers in the order they have been introduced. Please join me Join with me in providing them a warm welcome. Well. President Haney, members of the governing board, members of the faculty, family, and friends, and especially the class of 2023, hello. I am honored to address you tonight I was told I should start my speech off by being so formal, but I hope you don't mind as I continue to speak that I refer to you all as friends. I truly do feel so grateful to be before each of you this evening, an evening of joy, an evening of change, for some even a historic evening, for others a long-awaited moment. In whatever way you are joining us here tonight, I'm glad you're here, and know that you are right where you need to be. Bienvenidos, welcome. Bienvenidos, aloha kakao, welcome dear friends. To begin, let me propose the following question that I want to invite you to reflect on throughout the rest of this speech and tonight. The question being this, what requires more faith? Getting what you want or continuing on when you don't? I speak to many tonight who have, had, who have at one time in life not received something that they wanted desperately or even work tirelessly for. These experiences have been part of your story. I too have even wrestled with understanding what faith really is and what believing in yourself truly means. You, my friends, have had dreams and do have dreams that you are striving for, or maybe for the time being you are at a standstill moment, wondering if that dream is even worth all the pain you are experiencing. With all that said, I wish to share some thoughts about setbacks, progress, and growth. So friends, I know that at least for me, I learn a lot from listening to stories 
of what others have been through. And there's a story of a girl whose experience I want to share here tonight. Speaking of dreams, she was a young dream chaser in high school and had a passion for sports like no one you've ever seen. Like the nerd in the classroom, but for sports. Soccer, basketball, volleyball, softball, you name it. She would spend late nights under a spotlight in her backyard shooting hoops when she was 12. As she grew up in a small rural town, she learned the value of hard work. As she moved forward toward graduation after high school, she also faced a severe injury to her dominant shoulder. While competing, she tore her labrum, which is what holds your shoulder in its socket and stabilizes it. If any of you have ever played any sports or done anything that requires your shoulder, you understand what shoulder pain is. She had to get immediately, immediate surgery after the tear was discovered, the kind of surgery that most people don't receive until over the age of 40. But she got this operation done at age 17. Through this surgery, doctors found that instead of repairing the tear with three anchors, like a normal surgical operation, they had to use eight anchors to stitch up the tear because it was so severe. To say this was a simple setback in her athletic career and all her young dreams would be an understatement. For the next nine months, her recovery process was brutal. From stretching to sleeping upright to physical therapy to learning how to do everything with her dominant hand again to being able to shoot a basketball again. By some miracle, an opportunity was given her to walk on and play basketball at a small college that fall. The way this came about was unheard of. The coaches had never seen her play. They'd never even met the girl before offering the opportunity to have a spot on the team. Beginning the process of competing at a high level was another journey. That season was spent red shooting in order to continue the strenuous recovery. Yet a day did not pass her by where she was not the hardest worker in the room. Thankfully, there were coaches who didn't only give her an opportunity to chase her dream and continue to play collegiately, but these were coaches who cared beyond the skill set or talent, people who were invested in individuals and their journey. She learned from these mentors that how you do anything in this life is how you do everything. Who are you when not everything you wanted or dreamed goes your way? What requires more faith, getting what you want or continuing on when you don't? She only got in for 26 minutes the entire two, two years she played collegiate basketball, but that wasn't what mattered. What mattered was the journey of overcoming a setback. The majority of us here tonight have an underdog story of some sort. How have you or will you respond to setbacks in your life? How can you rise, progress, and grow through adversity to reach new heights? For those of you who don't know, this small town girl is me. And this experience has been my story. Those individuals who took a chance on me here at EA were Cameron Turner, Kenny Smith, Angelica DiPaolo, and Christopher Corona. Thank you, coaches, each of you, for giving me the two seasons I had to be part of the EAC women's basketball team. The setbacks were worth the growth and progress. And let me tell you, it was a process. This concept called growth is an interesting process. Have you ever tried to grow a plant, perhaps a flower? You know that the flower needs certain components to be able to grow. But you can no more force that flower to take root, sprout, and bloom any faster than you can provide the necessities for it to do so. It is a process that requires patience and diligence. There are few people in this life who can get by with the bare necessities for growth. Few who can be planted in the roughest soil and with such a strong desire for growth, seek out every ounce of sun and water they can get. While not all of us may be like this, a tender lesson my mom taught me in my youth was, bloom where you're planted. You can't always change where you're planted in life, so to say, but you can choose to seek the most out of what you got. You can take root and grow into someone you never thought you could be. In my story, it took me a while to understand where I was planted, figuratively, after overcoming an intense injury. I struggled for a while to figure out how to squeeze every ounce of the sun and rain that I received in my growth process. But something tells me that was part of the journey. Learning to bloom from a challenging place. What about your lives? In what ways have you been planted in tough situations? And how have you or can you bloom where you're planted? How can you still lead when you watch from the sidelines? when someone else gets the opportunity to fulfill your passion, your dream. 
Are you still able to bloom where you're planted? Learn a new role? Are you still able to work day in and day out, giving your best to yourself, your parents, your boss, your community, your family? How can you draw upon faith and belief in yourself in moments like that? Growth happens over time, but progression is a choice. Speaking of progress, what does that even look like? In my story, my shoulder set back, gave me a shot at a comeback, gave me an opportunity to progress. Life will give each of us opportunities every day. What are you doing with yours? Let's think briefly of this analogy. Life is like an escalator going down. Symbolic of the time we've been given here on earth. Once you reach the bottom, time will never be as it once was. And if you're not moving forward or upward, then you're essentially going backward. Don't confuse movement with progress because sometimes that movement could be in the wrong direction. Keep moving forward. There's not one set way that we will all reach success we seek to get in this life. We all have different starting points. Yet the same goal for an end point, to find our version of happiness and success. For some, that might be starting to work out of the home from a young age. For others, that's a high school diploma, a certificate, or an associate's bachelor's, master's, or PhD degree of some kind. Progress for you is whatever makes you stretch to become the best version of yourself. Sky's the limit. But really, you're the limit. And you determine your progress. In what direction are you moving? To each graduate who is here tonight, congratulations on your progress in life. Tonight is only a milestone in our progress. Keep seeking growth amidst the next step on your journey. And always remember this piece of the foundation. Choosing progress through setbacks is one of the keys that keeps you motivated, keeps you happy, keeps you living. Continually seek for progress. In conclusion, learn from the past, prepare for the future, but live now. Take action and do it. Your time and opportunities are all you got. In the words of an old country song, it can fade in a minute, no matter how you spin it. That clock keeps ticking. It can stop on a dime. Be careful how you spend it. In a blink, it's gone. Goodbye. Because there's no time like the present, and there's no present like the time. It's strange that a small town in the middle of nowhere can hold such a dear place in one's heart, a place of setbacks, comebacks, dreams, and progress. I'm only one of many to say the ways that EA has helped shape me. It's helped me chase new dreams and foster old ones. I've developed leadership skills and learned humility. I've made and treasured lifelong friendships and kick-started an education. Tonight, I hope each of you can go forward with this simple truth. Treasure the time and opportunities placed in front of you. Seek progress through the setbacks in this journey you've been given. Bloom where you're planted. And remember that it's often in the middle of nowhere that you find yourself. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Congratulations to Easterners on the college class of 2023. There's one thing that I know for sure. You cannot do great things alone. You must surround yourself with good people. And I know you have some great people with you here tonight. So let's give it up to parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, sisters, brothers, friends, neighbors, professors, and mentors who help you make it this far. Nine years ago, I came to America from Brazil with a big dream. When I first got here, I didn't know English at all. I didn't even know how to say hello, how are you? Nothing. I started off in New Mexico Junior College playing basketball. The first year, it was very hard for me because of the language barriers, because of the culture. The food was different. It was a little nasty for me personally, but now I love it. <laughs> the second year was much better for me, on and off the court. I was passing on my English class. I was doing great in basketball. I became first female American. 
And I had an opportunity to move on to the next level to play basketball because of my basketball's ability. So I had an offer from Utah State, and I took it. I continued my basketball career in Utah State University. I was there for two years. That was a great experience for me, especially for a girl like me coming from Brazil with big dreams, without knowing any English or anything. I played there for two years, but in my second year, for my senior year, I tear my ACL. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I never liked school. Basketball, I thought it was my plan A, I didn't have plan B. But this way I had to make a choice between go play professional ball or to go get my master's degree. And I chose education because nobody can ever take that away from me. <laughs> I went to Upper Eye University. I got my master's degree in business. Nobody ever in my family got that. So I'm very proud of it. My journey was ever easy. But there was three things that life taught me. To always have faith, because hard times don't last forever. Positive attitude and hard work. Your ability to keep moving forward in life depends on your attitude and any hard work. And to never give up. Life isn't easy. That was not easy for me. If I would have gave up every time that life got hard for me, I wouldn't be here tonight. So class of 2023, your journey just, just begin. And I know you're probably nervous, just like me when I came to America without knowing what is next. So my best advice to you is to always have faith, to work hard, and never give up. Thank you, and congratulations, class of 2023. Thank you so much, Sam and Coach DiPaolo, for your inspiring words and for sharing your stories that do also inspire us. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest speaker tonight is a true friend to Eastern Arizona College. We are honored to have him address us this evening. The Honorable Russell Rusty Bowers is the former speaker of the Arizona House of Representatives. A fourth-generation Arizonan, Mr. Bowers grew up on a sheep ranch in Chino Valley. He served in the 21st Legislative District in the Arizona House of Rep Representatives from 1993 to 1997 and was in the Arizona Senate from 1997 to 2001. Mr. Bowers was again elected to the Arizona House and served in the, in the 25th Legislative District from 2015 to 2023. He was elected Speaker of the House in 2019. Mr. Bowers is the recipient of the prestigious John F. Kennedy Profile in Courage Award. He is also the recipient of the Presidential Citizens Medal, which is the second highest civilian honor in the United States. Mr. Bowers is also a classically trained artist specializing in watercolor, oil painting, and sculpture. As a young man, he served a church mission in Monterey, Mexico. His friends from this area are often the subject matter of his paintings and sculptures. For many years, Mr. Bowers was an adjunct professor of art at Mesa Community College. Mr. Bowers has strong ties to Eastern Arizona College. His daughter attended EAC and is a former Miss EAC. As Speaker of the House of Representatives, Mr. Bowers gave EAC uh, Eastern Arizona College students opportunities that come around once in a lifetime. For several years, he invited EAC's marching band, which is the only community college marching band in the state of Arizona, the chance to play the Star Spangled Banner at the opening session of the, uh, of the legislative session. We truly appreciate his continued generosity. Mr. Bowers holds degrees from Mesa Community College, Arizona State University, and Brigham Young University. He and his wife, Donetta, live in Mesa and are the parents of seven children. I am thrilled to introduce our 2023 commencement speaker, the Honorable Rusty Bowers. I uh, 
Can I break with tradition? Okay, JJ, where are you at? JJ, come on up here. JJ has always wanted to wave the flag in the commencement exercise. Okay, JJ, undo those and take one of them. All right, let's see. A Braden. Braden, Braden, Braden. Our pitcher. Where are you at? Braden, is it? There you go, Braden. Come on. And then last, is it Michaela? Michaela Evans. I'm, I'm trying to see how far I come out here until the reverb goes off and blows our ears out. Okay. Now, you can stand here. We need, we need Michaela to have one of those super flags. Okay. Or you can go back and sit in your position. Now, here's your job. Okay, JJ's job. Let me see. We had, to, we had to really think this through. JJ's job is to make sure that any story I start... I end. No, no. Yours was the sleepers. Okay. Braden's is anything I start, I have to end the story. Because I get wandering in the wilderness. And, okay, okay. You good? And if, if I don't end it, you wave and say, hey, you got to go back, fi fix that story, all right? Now, JJ is for sleepers. If you're sleeping, you get, you know, you know if you get sleepy, he's watching for you. And if he's going to, He's going to tell me to up my game. And, and then, let's see. Kayla, what did I tell you we were supposed to do? Boredom. Boredom. Bored, she's the boredom coordinator. So if you get bored, you can send a note down to Michaela uh, so that she can come and prod me to do better. All right? You can stand here. You can sit in your seats. But just don't lose the flag, and i got to have it afterwards because there's some construction site down along the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> that needs those flags back, and I can't steal from the state of Arizona. All right. So how many of you in the audience, okay, are we, are we hit the zone? How many of you in the audience remember the subject of the commencement speaker from last year? Raise your hand. Come on, be honest. Okay. All right. Next year, you're going to remember. Okay. All right. I have, a, I have a wonderful family, and three of my kids have gone here to EAC. And for many years, I worked among the Tarahumara Indians in the Sierra Madre down in Mexico. And is anybody familiar with Guashoshi or, or Batopilas or Kril Chihuahua? And you can look them up on your cell phone. Look up the name of Ramon Figueroa in this little town of La Bufa, Chihuahua. So I, as a painter and sculptor, would use the Tarahumara as the subjects, the themes. We, we okay so far? Okay. As the themes for my artwork, sculpture, painting. And I would travel the first time, you know, it's 40 years ago. I would travel uh, about 175 miles on a dirt road winding down into Copper Canyon. And it was great. I had a wonderful time. I've, I've had some very, very um, miraculous events that happened there. And, and I, I promised President Haney that I would be, that I would, I would make this as brief as possible. So that gives me a lot of latitude. The most memorable trip was a little more tense. And I, I want to challenge all of you here. There's something about rural Arizona that the kids want to go to EAC. How many of you candidates come from a more rural area in Arizona? Let me just, any hands? Just stick a hand up. Okay, so quite a few. Thank you. There's also something about rural Arizona where people are close to the soil. And water's kind of ideal, and, and uh, we have some challenges that way. But people who depend on the soil also kind of have an element of faith. Did I go too far? Okay. It's a gamble to be 
a farmer or a fruit grower, etc. And I'd like to ask you, all of you, candidates and crowd, what did you gain and what did you lose here? And most of all, it's my hope that you didn't lose faith. One night, I was with five artists. We were coming back towards Palomas over below Columbus, New Mexico. It was about 1 o'clock in the morning, and I was listening. I was the driver of my old Suburban. I was pulling my little army trailer, and I was listening to a radio station out of Ciudad Acuna. And uh, it, was, it was always coming. You know, it's a big station, and it keep me awake. And I get my best sleep when I'm driving, and so it was important that I, that I stay awake. And about, about 10 miles south of Columbus, I heard this clack, 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 clack. And I knew that I was running out of oil. So I, there's no place to pull off the road. Two lanes, kind of elevated. I just slowed to a stop, got out, checked. All my oil cans were empty. So I told my friends, hey, get some sleep. I'm going to hike back to the Entronque. There was a, a Pemex, a, a gas station two miles back down the road where you can either go over to Juarez and, and El Paso or come on up to Columbus. And so I got out, and it was a, it was a night like tonight, uh, dark but no moon. Walking, I heard a car coming. I tried to thumb down a ride. The first guy left me. The second guy stops. And you know the, the Dukes of Hazard car that I don't You guys you weren't even born yet. I mean, Dukes of Hazard. So... But it was one of those Dukes of Hazard cars, and you know, it's a two door and a little triangle window. And I, I asked for a ride to the gas station, it gets in. I slide across long neck beer bottles into the back seat. And I'm thinking, this could be unusual. And these guys burn out, and they're 100, 110 miles an hour. They pass the first car, it gets where you're floating, you know, and, I, and we get there, and there's the Pemex, and I said, thanks, you guys, appreciate it. Uh, and, I, and they said, well, we'll come and help you. And they walk up, and they kicked in the door. Now, I'm in Mexico. They're kicking in the door. I'm an accomplice. This is, not, this is getting worse. And, and a young man was inside. I said, hey, no, no problem. It's all good. I'll pay for the door. I'll pay for the oil. And I gave him enough to do both, and I thanked him very much for the ride, and, and they said, no problem, we'll take you back. And I said, no, it's okay, it's not far, I'll walk back, it'll be great. And they said, no, we'll take you back. And I said, hey, really, you guys have been great. They said, no, we will take you back. I said, okay. So I slide in again, but they didn't go back. They kept going south. And we drove along, and I'm kind of keeping it light, you know, it's a sure beautiful night, beautiful stars, and they're not saying anything, and they're driving, they're driving, and then pretty soon they pull off down the highway, and they park in the darkness, and I'm in the back seat, and both of them just sitting there, the passenger is smoking a cigarette, and then a truck comes with its lights off and pulls down in front of us and backs up, and another truck in front of him and backs up, and then cars, two trucks come in behind us and back up, and I'm going, oh, oh, no, oh, please, please, God, please help me, and a guy gets out of the first truck and walks back and says, ¿Dónde está la patrulla? Where's the patrol, the, the army patrols, and the driver says, callao, and he thumbs over his shoulder at me, in the back seat. And the guy shines his flashlight on me and goes, what's that Gavacho doing back there? And he blows up and grabs the driver and drags him out, and slams him against the truck in front of us, and he's yelling at him, and a guy takes his place, and another man slides in the back seat with me, blowing cigarette smoke in my face while he's just looking at me. And he says, I can hear him out there saying, you take that Gavacho out and you get rid of him. You get rid of him right now. Go get rid of him now. And I look at the guy in my right hand and said, how you doing? Everything good? Everything fine? And he says, 
Would you like your cigarette? Now, okay, come on, easy on the flag. Are we okay? Did the boredom, did you read? Okay, this is the good part. All right. So he says, would you like your cigarette? You know what that means? I'm giving you your last cigarette. And I, I said, no, I, I'm sorry I don't smoke. He goes, por qué? Why not? I said, because uh, it's against my religion. It's all very quiet. He says, it's against your religion to smoke? I said, um, yes. And he says, uh, what religion is that? Meantime now, the, the driver comes back, pulls out the occupant, and slides in. And he's gripping the steering wheel and leaning forward on it. And I said, well, people call us Mormons, and, and, um, and we don't smoke. It's against our religion. And no, no, I'm sorry, but all due respect, I, I can't smoke. And it's dead quiet. And one thing I remember is the passenger holding the cigarette up by his face, the red ember glow on his eye as he looked back at me, that red crescent of his eye as he looked at me. And it was just dead quiet, and I go, what does this mean? And then the driver said, I used to be a Mormon. And I thought, what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? Is that good? Or is that not so good? Something good, something bad. And it was all quiet. And then the driver says, I'm taking him back. And the guy in the back seat next to me goes, Que? What? You're not taking him back. He said, I said, I'm taking him back. Get out. Salte. And so the guy climbs out. And he fires up that hemi. Blows up on the street, just burns the tires off that 446 pack. And I was back very fast. And he said, when you, he said to me as we arrived, he says, get out on my side. And as I stepped out, you know, I'm like four inches from his face, sliding out of that old roadrunner. And he says, put that oil in your car and Get out of here. And I said, you got it, brother. I'm out of here. And I only put one liter in, not five. I just put one. I thought, 10 miles, I can make it. And so we left. I pulled ahead. He followed me a little bit. He turned around. He left. Okay, so what's the moral of our story? It's not about my church. It's not about my church. It's about you. And here's the moral. Somewhere back there in time, somebody treated that driver good. And he left an impression on him. No, he's not, probably not going to Sunday school regularly as he's smuggling things into Mexico. But somebody made a good impression. And he didn't know me, but he saved my life. I'm standing here because that person somewhere did good. So my, they look good, okay? Everything's good. So my challenge to you is this. Someday they'll say, hey, where'd you go to school? Well, I went to EA for a while, and then I went over to XYZ. Many of the guy says, I had a great time. I had a professor at EAC, he's a great guy. Woman, she helped me in basketball. It was awesome. That cohesive thing goes on and on. The good that happened to you here doesn't have an end unless you end it. And the more you think, Okay, I don't know what I'm going to do today, but I'm going to do something good. The good you do has no end, and you don't know where it goes. 
You don't know where it goes. But it saved my life. Hey, put your hand down. You're not asleep yet. Okay. All right. So that's my message to you. President, to your company, to the choir, to everybody here, to the crowd, to, there's a little girl I saw her sitting right there. She has long blonde hair on the third row up. Can you wave your hand? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That a girl. I'm asking you, you, when you grow up, as you grow up, you'll make mistakes, but do good. Tell me you'll do good. Wipe your hand, head like this. That a girl. All of you, I challenge you, do good. Yeah, you'll make mistakes, but if you keep doing good, you're going to make it. We lost our daughter last year. She suffered terrible abuse from a bad person. And ultimately, she fought to get back on her feet. She got her degree. She became a counselor for women who had been traumatized. She was fighting. She was trying. And then another thing happened. Please, remember this night that you make a commitment. I will do good with my life. Do good. All right, that's it. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Good night. Speaker Bowers, I don't know about uh, the other 3,000 people here tonight, but I know that, that I and that young girl on the third row will not forget your message tonight. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Vice President Heston Welker will now present the class of 2023 to Chairman of the Board, Jeff Larson. Mr. Welker. Chairman Larson, I hereby present the candidates to receive the associate degree. I also recognize the candidates for certificates and graduates of the Arizona State University and Eastern Arizona College Concurrent Bachelor Degree Programs. Chairman Larson. President Haney, members of the District Governing Board, candidates for graduation, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor and privilege to accept the Eastern Arizona College Class of 2023. The board, by virtue of the authority vested in it by law and on recommendation of the college faculty, does hereby accept candidates for the associate degree and does recognize those earning certificates and bachelor degrees from the Eastern Arizona College and Arizona State University concurrent degree programs. Congratulations.
Bethany Lynn Dixon. Helaman R. Gile. Seth Warren Selby. Ariana Guadalupe Lopez. Cutter Sollers. Drew Aaron Curley. Deandra Dolcena Vasquez. Leah Camille Aguilar. Heather Ray Jacobs. Tiana M. Chadwick. Michaela Rose Evans. Meryl Noel Larson. Samson Arlo Colwell. Lily Meadow Rose Randell. Wensler A. Nosey Jr. Martin Eugene Press McGraw. Elizabeth Ann Stevens. Madison Doreen Partridge. Nathaniel Lynn Clement. Richard Dean Hobson. Tian Cum Levi de Spain. Victoria Camille Green. Grace Nana Ajufa Williams. Jenny Ordaz. Chloe Marie McCain. Rebecca D. Larson. Caitlin Christine Beals. Emily Kate Baker. Victoria Nicole Thompson. Yeah. 
William Herbert Cipitello. Sean Michael Stephen Chavez. Samuel Edward Fawcett. Jennifer Darlene Acosta. Elijah Dumdamaya Decina. Chandler D. Johnson. Casey Lee Wilslegel. Danielle Emma Jo Dillman. Kaylee Nicole Gardner. Haley Marie McKendrick. Tyra Ann Ellison. Catherine E. Leak. Tanner K. Kirby. Bo Michael Jacob. Harrison Jeffrey Oaks. Ian Douglas Crookston. Kiana Marie Lacey. Lucy Elizabeth Carter. Hannah Elizabeth Bingham. Natalie M. Hancock. Jasmine D. Altamirano. Catriana A. Smerglia. Maddox Kai Martinez. Mackenzie Lynn Gonzalez. Marley Ray Luster. Shannon Nora Biggs. Haley May Stedman. Madison Sue Webb. Megan Crockett Platt. Anarin Raquel Palmer. Lauren Rebecca Wood. Kelsey Shea Slade. Wyatt Dallin Moats. Ryan Farr Taylor.
Samantha A. Madrid. <laughs> Judith Rivera. <laughs> Ashley Nicole Baca. <laughs> Edina Guadalupe Colunga. Thaddeus Gray. Andrew Paul, Matthew Paul Slusher. Randy Porter. Sydney Tobias. Austin Ray. Damien Raul Alaniz. Sydney Faith Harrelson. Maria Victoria Bustamante. Austin Lane Holden. Sadie Baron Goodman. <laughs> Serena Renee Sanders. Hannah Nadine Swan. Madison Lee Gardner. Christy Don Michaud. Deanne Marie Massa. <laughs> Josie Eve Manuela Young. Amber Lurie Jarvis. Eliza Shea Montierth. <laughs> Seth Hutchins. <laughs> Sadie Lavetter. <laughs> Hannah May Myler. Laura Jade Alice Kulum. <laughs> Deanna J. Bradford Layton. Norma Duncan. Cheyenne Vera May Newton. Paige Dakota Perea. Ramon Angel Rios. Isaiah John Thompson. Julian Marcos Rascon. <laughs> Nicole Jean Ortiz.
Lauren Elizabeth Stanley. Enrique Cepeda Gallegos. Carlos Mario Gerardo. Auden Venzor Palacios. Alan Sebastian Ortiz Parson. Miley Lay Maka Olanali, excuse me, Miley Lay Makamai Onolani Rand. Bailey Alexius Gillum. Dante Javon Smolinski. Alexandra Jermaine Williams. Carly Haas. Tausala ku ipo moi ave ave. Kaya Isabel Baker. Lacey Ann Clough. Fiona Grace Hoffman. Jessica Caitlin Clough. Mark Wilford Hewish. Khalil Youssef Malouf Salazar. Bailey Kaylin Barnes. Christina Martin. McKay Curtis Griffin. Dallas Ashley Casillas. Faustino Ziga Miranda. Gary Abel Nahar. Emiliano Ortego Castra. DeRay Henry Seamster. John M. White. Marcos Julian Guillen. Luis Francisco Aleguiar. Victor Brandon Trujillo. Benjamin Dean Bisline. Benjamin Nelson Harris. Brody Lee Waters. Lorenzo Rene Picasso. Brianna Mesa. Antonia M. Rees. Ha 
Hannah Lucille Webster. Nicole Marie Estrada Lopez. Madison Shea McDonald. Lindsay Ann Lutz. Payson Lee Lutz. Jackson Tyler Lutz. Dallas Chavez. Kaylee Madison Hines. Mary Candace Savage. Marissa Caitlin Pejarano. Caitlin J. Begay. Deja Pauline Begay. Kylie Ann Oliver. Erin Elizabeth Pike. Alyssa Marie Bonilla. Kylie Renee Gluez. Derek Joshua Nabor. Lucas Jacob Fertig. Martine Salazar Jr. Yeah. Jaden Taylor Martinez. <laughs> Lindsay McMaster. <laughs> Reagan Leanne Fuller. Jacob Shade Flower. <laughs> Karina Vega. <laughs> Kelly Kendra Harris. Sonia Roybal. <laughs> Alicia Ray Cruz. <laughs> Isabel Jacqueline Ceballos. <laughs> Mia Rose Anteveros. Adriana M. Dianda. <laughs> Elijah Josiah Cardenas Leva. <laughs> 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 
Marin Holly Johnston. Cora Isabel Spears. Liliana Rose Bailey. Catriella Hope Jernigan. Molly Ann Maxwell. Landon Allen Webb. Sophia Grace Romero. Jackson Scott Hackett. Elizabeth Leanne Troop. Lillian R. Knight. Sarah Elizabeth Areen. Jarrell Del Rosario Diaz. Jalen Juan Kichian. Dylan Cameron Aker. Quinton Wiltbank. Trino Diego Garcia. Clee Butler. Rihanna Lorraine Staley. Jordan Kathleen Lawson. Elisa Gabrielle Gonzalez. Eileen Gutierrez Kilo. <laughs> Lisbeth Yvonne McCray. <laughs> Nathaniel Dean Rapier. Nathan Thomas Kempton. Lorene Elise Martinez. Isabella Dominique Villa. Marco Antonio Muniz. Victoria Alaniz. Catherine Adeline Lara. Crisia Marie Rosari Cortez. Joshua R. Biggs. Tyler Bronson Lewis.
Jaden Stephen Preston. <laughs> Kayani Lynn Preston. <laughs> Melanie and Kitian. Haley Nyland Gosian. Corey Leon Chi. Amanda Marie Ray. Jamie Luna Reese. Lauren Emily Bastine. Jordan Marie Earp. Hannah Shiflett. Tathra Michelle Ward. Amelia Nicole Clark. Delaney Joyce Mortensen. Jessica Danielle DeWitt. Shelby Curtis Despain. Justin D. Castaneda. Mary Speedy Farnsworth. Jedediah Malloy Bigler. Noah Ray Bevins. Tret Paul Wiltbank. <laughs> Jaime Dax Gonzalez III. <laughs> Ashley Nicole Brachter. Tiffany Joanne Wright. Morgan Takei Green. Freddie Gonzalez Castro. Orion Page White Singer Dillon. Keona Ashley Gilbert. Nathaniel Jaden Diaz. Cecilia Eowyn Madrid. <laughs> Isabel Elise Schock. <laughs> Megan Isabella Carbajal.
Alize Monique Munoz. Brianna Burkett. Rachel Layton. Blaine Davis Wooten. Caitlin Hansen. Carly Smeltikop. Abigail Ann Hamilton. Savannah Lee Oliver. Dustin Bratton Earls. Aubrey Elizabeth Palmer. Harrison J. Williams. Corbin Wilson. Sebastian Bryce. Tylee Ray Perkins. Sydney Marie Eaton. Madison Nicole Ferris. Emily Dawn Russell. Anna Elise Clifford. Hunter Edward John. Raven Lindsay. Dylan Bradley Wayne Penry. Brandon Perry Gluth. <laughs> Gustavo Abraham Soto. <laughs> Isaac David Silva. <laughs> Madison Josie Chavez. Emma Maria Roach. Cheyenne Sierra Cunningham. Nohelani Paul Maikai, Mike Aloha Akana. Aubrey Faith Gabarek. Cassidy Lena Christine Morrow. Charlotte Lily Velasquez. Savannah Rose Clausen. Maya Mahelani Andres. Krista Verity Zagala.
Jaylene D. Mancha. Lauren Nicole Salcedo. Do we know how long they're going to go? Done. We're done. Ladies and gentlemen, with the uh, direction of the wind tonight, I perceive that this half of the crowd is a lot more glittery than <laughs> that side of the crowd. You will all need to go home and wash off a little bit more. But you look beautiful. <laughs> We'd like to congratulate all of the recipients of the associate and concurrent bachelor's degrees who uh, we are recognizing tonight. Candidates, please rise for the turning of the tassel. Now, now candidates, we need to get this right. Reach up, move your tassel from your, left, your right side to your left side. You can always remember which side your tassel goes on because the left side is over your heart and will always remind you of your alma mater. Aww. <laughs> we now invite everyone to please rise to sing the alma mater that will be performed by EAC's music department under the direction of Mr. Chase Moore. The words of the alma mater are printed on the back of your program. Ladies and gentlemen, this weekend has been the Region 1 Championship of the, of the women's softball for this region. Today was day one. Eastern Arizona College won today. They will continue tomorrow at 1230. The winner of tomorrow's game will head to, to Nationals, 
we'd like to congratulate our EAC women's softball team. If you're not doing anything tomorrow at 1230, come to the field behind me and watch some great softball. We'd like to thank all of you for your attendance tonight as we celebrate the milestones of these amazing graduates. Now, it's time to celebrate. Please, wherever you go and whatever you do, be safe, travel safe, and uh, as always, go Monsters! Tonight
jump from high school to university can be overwhelming. That's why Eastern Arizona College is a great place to start. EA offers personalized education at a quarter of the cost. Small classes with hands-on experience, surrounded by people who genuinely care. Plus, there's always something fun to do on and off campus. Whether you're planning to transfer to a university or learn a new trade, Eastern Arizona College is the place for you. It's changed my life. Let it change yours.